And so when you're talking about dying to yourself to live for Christ, it's the same thing in marriage. And so I'm, I'm going to give you straight no chaser, but discreetly. Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godin and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Nixon Sylvain, and I'm with Adney Godin. And today we're going to have another discussion with our dear sister, Sister Kimberly Hernandez. But before we chat with her, Adney, I know oftentimes <laughs> you mean to give you the opportunity to ask me, how am I doing? How are you doing today, Nick? Ah, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> I can say this now, but overall, it's it's always a blessing um, to be on this podcast to just share, just to share, you know, God's word and just to hear other people's stories. So how about yourself? I have, I'm mentally exhausted. Let me just say that. I love transparency. I'm mentally exhausted. You remember promotion on a job, no, learning new things, but God is good. I shared a, a word with some sisters a couple of days ago. So um, I'm just grateful and th- thankful to walk in the walk that God has prepared for me. Amen. Amen. Well, congratulations on your promotion. You're spiritually promoted and God has promoted you in the earthly realm. May God continue to bless you. So Sister Kimberly, talk to us. Good morning, good morning, Brother Nick and Sister Adney. How are you all today? Good morning, my sister. My- I'm, honestly, I'm good, Kim, Sister Kim. I am so good. It's Like I said, just mentally exhausted, but uh, God is good. He knows why he chose me. So I, I'm, I can say nothing but thank you for choosing me for this. Sister Kim, we we're, were just we was inspired by by your you know part one Amen. of your show. Amen. We just want to thank you for for you know joining us for part two. We just feel that there was more that that could have been said, and and I always say this that it's very difficult to share your life story of how God has called you in thirty minutes. It's very difficult, so we just thought we'll bring you back on. And um, Adney Ad, Adney has a question she want to ask you um as we. Uh, so last, the last time we spoke, we were, you know, you shared a little bit about, you know, the divorce. So this time I want you to share with our listeners, like the preparation that God did in you as you were going through the divorce and after the divorce, because, you know, there are some people who say, you know what, we divorce amicably, we're good, there's nothing. And then there are people who are just like, he is the devil incarnate. I just cannot. So I want you to share with our listeners, how has that been for you? And then how has God brought you through it? Thank you. And and first of all, I just want to thank you. And I give all glory and honor to God just for placing me in the positions that I've been in, whether they were, they were, blessings or whether they seen that I was a curse. I thank God for that. And I thank God for you all with the vision to allow myself and others to bless others through our experiences. And on that note, Adney, I have to tell you that I don't, I can't say that I was prepared for divorce because unless your heart, your mind, and your spirit is not aligned with the desires and the will of God and what God has orchestrated through marriage. You don't go into marriage anticipating divorce. So I don't think anyone can say, Hey, I was prepared. You may have had the contemplation, which every married couple, I don't care who you are to say, Hey, this, this is not what I expected. I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't, I don't know about this, but the actual preparation of divorce no, it's not there. I don't care how many issues you have and so forth. And so I know for certain that I can't say that I was prepared. Was I, as you stated, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted, exhausted. I was even honestly spiritually exhausted because 
in the midst of the trials, the struggles, honestly, we did not lean on God the way we should have. There were times that I, I've done numerous of you version devotions, and it's one thing to read wisdom, and it's another thing to consume it. And so looking back now, I was reading. I was reading how to salvage a marriage. I was reading how to be a praying wife. I was reading all of that. But in the midst of the turbulence, it was like having all wisdom teeth pulled at one time. Painstaking. Because what I'm reading, what I'm looking at, isn't what I'm seeing manifested in my face. And so then there was a trying of my faith that I had never ever experienced in all of my Christian journey. Because now I'm looking at my spiritual position before God, my position as a wife, and I'm looking at my husband. And I know oftentimes some people say, oh, don't focus on them, focus on you. That's hard. And especially when there's a direct impact. And so um, just at, at just going through divorce, it's, it's life altering. It's, it's life changing. It's painful. Even in, in my position, and I know, and, and you know, uh, people divorce for other reasons. Sometimes they're minute, sometimes they're petty, and people just give up. And ultimately, we you get, you have to get to the point of totally relinquishing your faith and your belief that this union is going to make it. And in that point, you're you're not only relinquishing that hope and that union, but I have to be honest, you're relinquishing your faith in God as well. And so personally speaking, because I can only speak for myself, I, I gave up and I gave up a long time ago um, because we, we married in 2014, November 14. I found out I was expecting my son by February of 15. You do the math. <laughs> That's a few months in. And 2016, I was separated. Nobody knew. I came down to Miami to get away. And I went back a few weeks later, hoping for the best, but the best never came. And so one of the things that you stated in, the, in your just testimony of God's increase, you said, and correct me if I get this wrong, but you said appreciating or being thankful for the call that God placed in your life. That's a mouthful. Because that's that's inclusive of marriage. And you're looking at this person and you're saying, Lord, you call me for this? This is what you placed in my life? And guess what? In whatever state that I find myself in, I've learned to be content. I didn't I wasn't content. And I and I'm I'm being very, very honest, very transparent. I felt like God had punished me. And just as Brother Nick stated earlier, you know, when you have that spiritual eye and it's fine tuned and it's and it's keen on God's movement and God's calling and his his placement in your life and all that good stuff. And I know in that place, I was the farthest away from God that I had ever been in my life. The attacks were real. And I had to that's why. And, and so just rounding it up, was not prepared for the divorce. Yeah, we spoke about divorce. I went through verbal abuse. I left when it started to turn into physical threats. Prepared for divorce? No. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support 
and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Tell us, tell our listeners how God was in the midst of all of that with you. Okay, absolutely. God's presence, (laughs) because that's the only thing that kept me afloat emotionally and mentally. I would have to say that God was my invisible life jacket because there were many of days and nights that I felt like I was sinking. Like I felt that I was being suffocated. My prayer life was struggling. When I I remember going to worship one day, and if anyone knows me, know that I go to worship and I go to worship to worship. My walk with God is not a joke, has never been. And I sat in the foyer at Southside and I couldn't even bring myself to go in before the throne. My spirit was so vexed, the stress level, just as I stated before, I was totally disconnected. And so I saw God hold me up at my weakest point in my life. I saw God hold my hand, guide me when I I felt unworthy, when I felt like everything around me was just failing. And Yes, I, I had high hopes. We we all have high hopes when we get married. We think that we have found someone that's going to be that best friend, that's going to be that life partner, that's going to breathe God into you if you are equally yoked. But um, that wasn't that wasn't where I found myself, realistically speaking. And so God God carried me. He carried me when I when I felt like truly giving up in all aspects, just giving up. But even in the midst of that, I think the greatest thing that God gave me was our child because he gave me a reason to look in the face of an angel that I watched 44 days in the NICU come to the point where he could come home, September 25th. And so earlier on, even at the point of our son being born, I was experiencing negativity Even through my my pregnancy being high risk, I was experiencing negativity. And so God, I just have to say God was my life jacket. He was the life jacket that I didn't even ask him for. And I needed so desperately because it had not been for God and had not been for my sister that he placed there. There were times that that I was so exhausted that I returned back to work after our son came from the hospital and I blacked out behind the wheel. And he opened my eyes in just enough time that I did not collide with another car. And so when I when I tell you about a life jacket, I mean that I mean life support, life jacket, everything that to the sustainer. We know God is the sustainer of life and everything that entails our life. But that's how God kept me, because I, I, I would not be here. I would not have this testimony. I would not. I would not be me. And it took a long time for me to get to the point where I said, Lord, even in this bitterness, they're sweet. You've given me that. And so, and I'm so thankful that he brought me through the divorce proceedings, the going back and forth to Orlando um, with my child on the road and, you know, just placing my sister in a position where she could drive with me because it was too much. In and of myself, it was just too much for me to do it alone. And so I thank God for the people that he placed in my life that as broken as I was, he held those pieces just in place, just enough for me to continue on and just regain my spiritual faith, my spiritual focus on him to say, I know you got me. Notice this isn't what I want it to be, but you wouldn't have put me here if you weren't going to keep me. And so, and that was, and and I honestly, I have to go back the day that I left after getting married and the beautiful honeymoon and, and all that good stuff. And the last words my mom said to me was that God will never take you where he's not faithful enough to keep you. I witnessed it and I lived it. I'm sorry. As, as you were talking, all I could think of is the scripture that tells us that he is the potter. We are the clay, like he'll mold and shape us. 
Like, I just felt like you were on the wheel and he was just just breaking the pieces and just molding you some more and breaking the pieces and, you know, making you into the masterpiece that he has created you to be. So I thank you so much for sharing that with us. All right, Brother Nick, go ahead. If you enjoy podcasts like myself and you're seeking a podcast host, look no other than Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout gets your show listed on every major platform. You get a great looking podcast website, audio players that you can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episode, and more. Podcast isn't hard when you have the right partners on your side. The team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Following the link in the show notes, let's Buzzsprout know that we sent you. Get you a $20, $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan and help support our show. Thank you. Amen, amen. So what I, I appreciate about your story, uh, Sister Hernandez, and, and again, I thank you so much for your transparency. Um, I was once in a dark place. And you know, when you have a calling, when you know what you're suppo- what God has called you to do, and you're not doing it because you said something. You said that you were um, spiritually exhausted. You were far from God. And and I want to ask you a question. And the reason why I had to bring put myself in that in that place, say, hey, I was in a dark place. There are some things that I had to do to get back where I needed to be for God. I had to get myself out of the way. So I want to know what were some of the things that you did to align yourself back with the purpose in the will of God. Yes. Yes, Nick. I'm I'm glad that you you presented that question because you stay you said the answer already. Move yourself out of the way. And so we already know the battle is not ours. Brother Kevin Jones from Pembroke Park coined the phrase and my mom shared it with me and she said if you can see me I'm not your enemy. We look at our spouses. We can look at our siblings. We can look at whomever. And we see this person. And sometimes it's often hard to detach the tangible and what we see against what we know. We know the battle is not ours. Yes, we know that anything, as as Adney stated so perfectly, or it was you, that anything that resembles or reflects God, Satan's coming and he's coming full throttle, straight, no chaser, like I like to say. And so in that place, and like you said, that dark place, because it is a dark place, because anywhere that you're pulled and it pulls you away from the throne of God is darkness. I don't care on what level, if it's small or if it's big, if it's away from God, it's darkness and it's a dangerous place to be. And I recognize that in myself and where I was. and. It took me allowing myself to fail to sell, if that makes sense. Because when I say allowing myself to fail, I had to fail me. I had to fail my choices and fail my decisions and the things that I was trying to do in order for that season to make sense. And I had to allow God to break me and break me. He did. I've never uh, against contrary belief, I've never felt like I've arrived. He showed, he showed me that even way before I even met my, my ex-husband. I never felt like I arrived. But if there's anything that God taught me was that even where you thought you were spiritually, where you thought that, hey, I don't know what I'm going to face in this marriage, but I know I can make this with you, Lord. I stated the truth and it's still the truth. Even after divorce, it's still the truth that God is faithful. It's still the truth that God kept me. It's still the truth that God delivered me. And as my mom said, God did not take me where he was not faithful enough to keep me. Not only did he keep me, but he restored me. And he's continuing to do that almost three years later. Hallelujah. He's continuing to do that. You you know, I'm going to ask you to go into detail. So, So the reason why I presented that question that way. Because Absolutely. when I was in my dark place, and I know this is not about me, but I just want to kind of like put this out there. When I was in my dark place, God revealed something to me about me. 
Okay. I had to have a love for his people. People, when I mean, when I mean people, I mean that my people that was close to me, friends, family. So it, just like Job, you know, when Job lost everything, he had his, his entourage, his family around him. Obviously, the, obviously they died. Only his wife, his wife bashed him, cursed God and die. And he had his friends thought he did something wrong, you know, that, that with God. And, and then Job got his deliverance. And, and I, right. I love this scripture. And I'm about to read it to you. Job 42, 10. It says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his prosperity and doubled his former possessions. That's when he got his deliverance. So for me, when I was in my dark place, I started praying for people. I started getting in the word of God. I started doing things that was that I, I took the focus off of me and I started putting it on other people, even people that hurt me. I started praying for them. It was difficult for me to do and I did it. So I want you to I want you to tell our listeners in detail what is it that you did to get get it back in that place? Was it worship? Was it your mother praying and fasting for you? Was it friends that that encourage you? What what was it? Cuz somebody right now is in a dark place right now and they say I need a breakthrough. I need a deliverance. Yes, yes. I need her to to pour out onto me. What did she do? We want to hear that. What exactly did you do? Yes. And Nick, my greatest go to was I I definitely have to say worship, because as I said, I shared with you all earlier, I pulled away from God and maybe it was the height and just not seeing God come through the way I wanted him to at that moment. And so, yes, indeed, I definitely have to say that my 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 rebirth was worshiping. It was through my praising. It was through me even even coming to the point where I had to repent. And I and I want you to know and I hope and pray because I, I got chills even listening to you because it's like you stated it. And, and I, I even shared with Brother Daniels one time. I said, I felt like I could not love like God. And my God, he took a man. Oh, Jesus. He took a man that treated me like I was unworthy. I can I can count on one hand how many times I was told I was beautiful. And he took um, that man to teach me that I could love like God. And I have to be honest because I didn't begin to love like God until I was divorced. Until I had to look at the enemy, like you said, and say, I'm going to still love you like God. I began to pray for my ex-husband the way I should have been praying for him during my marriage. And I'm being very honest because when the attacks get real, you, the, the devil will pull you and pull you. And I already told you, I was so detached from God in that season. And so, yes, that's when, and, and I'm so happy that you laid that on the table because what I thought God or what I thought I couldn't do, God showed me, yes, you can. And, and he brought me in one of the lowest points of my life and the most painful points of my life to show me, yes, you can. And yes, you will. And so that was, that was my reconnecting to God. And that was my prayer, my singing, even through the attacks that I even currently face. God has still continued to rebuild me and he's rebuilding me from the inside out through my praise, through my worship. I'm in a place right now where I can't drive, can't do much, would love to be at the church and serving, but he's still allowing me to be used. And he's allowing me to be used because I was first willing to be broken. And so I'm thankful for that because that's how I've, I, that's, that's how I'm getting over because I'm still yet in the phase of coming out of that dark. But I praise God that I'm not where I was. I don't ever want to go back there, but it's through praise. It, and it's just like he say, praise your way through it. You praise your way through it. You're going to make it. Don't ever let the devil silence your praise. Don't ever let him silence your prayer. I don't care if you got the prayer, pray in the midst of, of you, you maybe saying the wrong thing. You start praying to God, maybe thinking the wrong thing. Start praying to God because you have to get God back in it. And that's that's the only way you're going to make it. Put God where God belongs. And you'll be all right. Amen. Amen. That's well said. And, and again, you know, I, I love your your transparency. Um, and it's something that came to my mind as you you were talking and like the preacher, you know, preach. I heard this one preacher. He said, um, 
your spouse or people are not your enemy. See, a lot of people don't know we don't battle against flesh and blood. I think you said you've heard, this battle is not yours for the Lord. There's a spiritual battle that's taking place. And so what God has revealed to me and opened my spiritual lens that Nick is not the people. It's like, it's like, you know, somebody may say, hey, this person is sinning, they're doing this. It's not, it's not the people that God hate. You know, it's the sin that God dislikes. So, you know, so when I look at people, I look at people for who they are. I, I have a love for people. So I want to know, like, now that you're you're coming out and I want you know, to share with the listeners, what are some of the things you're doing to draw people closer to Christ? Um, you know, it could be, a, you know, it could be your family or, or, you know, some personal experiences that you have experienced because this is called by God. God has called you. And when a lot of people don't understand that a Christian walk or the, I, I should say a disciple, when you're a disciple for Christ, your life is going to be like a zigzag. Oftentimes people want to come to Christ because they're going through turmoil. They're going through a lot of situations. They say, oh, you know, maybe if I come to God, then my situations will go away. No, your situations going to get worse because <laughs> it's a, it's spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. So I want to know, like, what are some of the things now that, you know, you're coming out and God has revealed new things to you. You have new purpose, new meaning. Like, what are some of the things that you're doing? And before you answer that, the reason why I presented that question, because let's talk, I want to talk about COVID just briefly. So when COVID hit, I really thought it was the end of the world. I know y'all probably think I'm like going crazy. I said like, wow, God, like if this is it. Like you're coming God. And then I had a self check. I looked, I had to look at myself spiritually. God said, Nick, what are you doing? Have you exhausted all your gifts? to bring me to glory? Have you done everything that I've called you to do before I come? So I had this in my mind, but the Holy Spirit was ministering to me. Like said, like, if I come, are you ready? If I come today, are you ready to do my will? Like, are I like, are you, have you been doing my will? So that's how call by God came about. Cause I said, you know what, God, I got, I got to exhaust all everything you have put in me and I can't be fearful. I just got to do it. So I want to know what are some of the things that you're doing to build yourself up, to draw closer to ministry, to bring people to Christ, because you're called by God to do that. What is it? <laughs> Amen. And 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 you and absolutely, Nick, and, and praise God, because just as you stated, I believe that we all took a very introspective look on our spiritual life at the beginning of COVID. And I spoke on the women's call uh, last month, I believe it was. And I titled that lesson 2020 revision because in 19, we were seeing 2020 vision, 2020 vision. And I, my divorce was finalized in April of 2019. And so I just, like I shared with my sisters, I said, I know God, I know <laughs> you, you bringing me to a better place this year and look where we ended up. And so then around June or so, because I was working different, different, you know, delivery services and so forth, trying to get my will back turning of stability. And now here comes COVID. Now we have to shut down. Now my son is is out of school and at home. And so now I feel like my hands are tied. Then it became the physical challenges with my health. And I said, just like you, Nick, Kim, what have you done for God? What are you doing for God? Yeah, you went through the storm. Yeah, you've been through this. And so I started looking at like you, God, I can't go down like this, not like this. And I started asking God truthfully, truthfully, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And so Nick, currently, while I'm not physically hands on with the body because of my restrictions, God has used me even while I was going through, even before the divorce was finalized. There's a women's, a wife talk on Facebook. There's the marriage club. And right now, even though I can't go, God's allowing me to do it and be his mouthpiece. He's given me the place and the platform to say, hey, listen, I've been there. Hey, you're going to be all right. I know it hurts. Cry if you have to cry. And so right now, I thank God for using me as his mouthpiece. I thank God for giving me a drive for his word as much as I want to breathe, because that's how he's using me right now is to show people, yes, you can go through hell and you can survive. 
with God. And like you said, we're called by God. And so, like I've told you guys, I haven't worked in almost three years, probably a little bit over, but I have not been forsaken. God's put me in places where I'm able to help a homeless man. I don't have a job, but he's given me resources and that time for such a time as that to be a provider. And so he's using me while it may be not be to the facet or the extent that I want right now, but he has me where he wants me to be. And I'm continuing every day to build myself physically, mentally, spiritually to become fully, fully meek for his use. Okay. So I, I, it's reminding me of what, of my unemployment. And the thing is, sometimes we look at those homeless people and we just say, oh, they're homeless. And we don't see them as angels, right? And I remember coming from a ladies retreat, had no money with my aunt buying food. And this man walks up to the car and said, I don't want anything. All I want is food. And I looked at my aunt and I said, I'm tapped out, but we have to get him something, right? And when we purchased the food, they gave us the wrong order. And I'm looking at God, like all I saw was God. We went right back to that place. The man was no longer there. And I said to my aunt, that was an angel. Like God allowed us to experience what it means to entertain angels. Because we drove around. This is a homeless man and he was gone. And that's when God had to show me. Wow. You, we focus only on the physical, but we never look at the spiritual, what it means to go deep within the spiritual. So my question for you is, as you're like, God is breaking you. How have you gone deeply within the spiritual to, for him to show you like Kim, this is what it is. You're going to see things that other people won't understand. You're going to experience things that only I can reveal to you. Like he did Moses and all of them. How has he done that for you in this journey? And I, I would have to tell you that God is yet doing that in me. And I reckon that it did take a place for me to be, like you said, totally tapped out, totally emptied. And I found myself there. And like you said, I I believe that God showed me and I'm going to tell you. And and like you said, sometimes people don't understand. And even in my coming out, I didn't realize how exhausted I was. I, I can say it now because I can now look back and see what state I was in. Back then, sometimes you don't see it because you so you're in it. It's it's right in front of you, and so your peripheral is clouded. And so I remember laying down next to my son, and this is this was deep for me. And I'm going to get to where you want me to be. And I just heard this 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 whatever. Very as I'm speaking to you, say I could I could take him. I could take him, or I could take him out. And I looked, and I said to myself, I said, wait a minute now, because that was the enemy. And even as God was bringing me out, I'm looking at my child and I, and, and, and that was totally, totally. Cause I've never, I've never thought of harming myself. Thank God. I've never thought of harming my child, but even as God was bringing me out, he was still trying to claw at me. And I got up and I started rebuking. I started praying. I started saying, the devil, devil, you're a liar. You're a liar because he's going to try to take you down even to the very end. He's going to still try to take you down and take you out. And so when you talk about God revelation, because there was a period and, and I didn't even realize it until you just asked me that question. I used to hear so much voices. No, but in my subconscious. And I think that that was the, 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 that was a highlight of God just coming through and ministering and uttering his will in my life. And, and most of the times it was just telling me and assuring me, Kim, you're going to be all right. You coming out, you coming out. And so when we talk about call by God and we talk about just hearing, just seeing and hearing God's manifestation in our life, what well, God is, is using others even around me and the connecting point to say, you have purpose. Sometimes we don't feel what we're doing is God's purpose. Yes, it is his purpose. 
because you guys know Sister Kim. I'm hands on. I'm this. I'm that. And so through this, I just felt like, where your hands at? Where 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 are you for real, Kim? Because this ain't even you. And so when we talk about called by God, I'm doing exactly what God has me to, supposed to have to be doing. Because if it wasn't, He'd be moving me around and He'd be agitating me. So even in a still place, I'm living my purpose. I'm being His mouthpiece. And I'm still yet being corrected. I'm still yet, like you said, on that wheel of being molded because the molding never ends until God says so, until the potter has has perfected his peace. And I, I implore you, if you guys don't know of him, Danny Goki, masterpiece. What you stated, okay, so you already know Sister Adney. Brother Nick, if you've never listened to Danny Goki, masterpiece, Danny speaks about that tearing apart and rebuilding that beautiful piece. And he, he in his lyrics, he says, you're building a masterpiece. And so God has me in a place where left unto myself, Kim would have been out there trying to make it what she wanted to do, make it and what I wanted it to be. But right now, God has uttered in my spirit and he physically has me in a place to be still, be still and know that I am God. And that's what I have to say right now. That's what he's manifesting through me. Be still and know that I am God. Oh my goodness, my sister. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We never know what our brothers and sisters are going through. And the thing that God is revealing more now is community. I want you to share with us, how have you built your community? How have you become so vulnerable where you, even people you don't really have a connection with yet, how are you allowing them to pour into you? How are you allowing them to be a part of Kim's journey to, you know, we need an Aaron and an Aaron and her, not only the men, okay? <laughs> we need us a Sarah, we need us a, a, a Hagar, whatever the case may be, but how are you allowing sisters to be that for you, to hold your hands up while you go through this journey? Adney, I, the, the, your key point was transparency. And if someone doesn't know where you are or what you're going through, they can't help you. And they don't know. If they don't know, they don't know. And some people have said, you're a private person. And I don't consider myself as being so much as private, but more so wise. Because everyone doesn't need to have access to you in a dark place. Everyone doesn't have the wisdom or maybe what you need. And sometimes God puts us in, in that holding area and only cer certain people. And so I often tell people, I don't have a circle. I have a triangle. And so it's from just a few points and that's what brought me through. And so I have to say that I'm transparent. It's easy to hold that stuff in. And Adney, one of the things I'm so glad that you said that because Nick's wife and I have, we go back and we've talked, we've had very intimate conversations. And I told her, I said, Trinique, I'm giving myself this amount of time to verbally speak about that divorce. And after that time, that's it. And so I didn't allow myself to hover on that negative negativity. I focused on the good, on what God has done on God's deliverance. And so what I'm doing right now is transparency. It wasn't meant for me to hold it. It was meant for me but then it was also meant for me to show somebody else there's life after divorce. You are called by God and there's life, there's, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's wholeness. And so I'm being transparent. I would have never thought that, I, that this would be a part of my testimony, but I thank God it is because I can't help someone get through what I've never been through. And so it's transparency, transparency of being that vocal, being, and, and being able to be poured into willing to receive that, willing to receive wise counsel. And, and, and that's where, where it's, it's indicative of your survival. Be willing to be poured into, be willing to receive it because there was a point and I, I, my triangle, I have some, I have some sisters that they'll tell you, sister Kim said, I can't receive that right now. And I'm talking about the word of God. I'm talking about wisdom, wise speaking. And I didn't want to hear it. And so even while you may be at that place and find someone that you can be transparent with, not someone that's gone side eye or look at you sideways. No, find someone that you can say what you need to say. And even if you need to repent afterward, 
find that true person that will pour into you what thus says the Lord, no matter whether you want to hear it or not. And most of all, be transparent with how you're feeling. Be transparent with where you are and what you're going through. Well said, sis. So, Sister Kim, um, so I'm going to close out right now. But before we go, um, you mentioned a, a couple couple things that you're speaking on. Are those open to the public? If well, so, that, do you want to share it? That actual site online is actually, and I do, I do encourage every married woman to get on Wife Talk because it is a forum. It's on Facebook, and th- sometimes they do videos. But that was intricate, even especially after the divorce, because you are a mouthpiece. And there are so many hurting wives that don't that feel like they can't speak to someone or whatever. So just really quickly, wife talk. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Those are women of God. They speak life. They speak God. And so I definitely have to put that in there. And of course, women of hope uh, weekly devotion on Fridays at 830. Absolutely. Because there's no other powerful force than prayer. And so those are the two. So I was fortunate to be called on to speak on our Women's of Hope devotion and the Wife Talk online. And I encourage every wife, even if you're not a wife, I don't know if they'll let you in, but even if that is an intricate tool to be a part of as a wife, and if you're going through, or even if things are great for you, praise God, you can be a tool and an instrument to give others hope. Amen. Amen. Um, Obviously, you know, um, this is not a divorce show. That's just Sister Kim's testimony. And it was well, a powerful, well said testimony. And, you know, God, God loves marriages. We believe that the devil attacks marriages, whether or not you're in the church and out of the church. So if you are married, do everything that you can to, to keep your marriage. If you exhausted all options and the person still wants to leave, God bless them. And you'll most likely have a, sis, a testimony as Sister Kim. But Sister Kim was very transparent. Again, we thank her for her transparency. So we're just going to roll out of here and y'all be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember... God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed He was buried and he rose on the third day. By believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized, you will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You've heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.